going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. I'm so excited about today's episode because it's going to be a continuation of our sprout and microgreen series that we've that we've done on this channel. And I think a lot of you have raised these questions, which is why I'm filming this episode about what is a microgreen, what makes a good microgreen, and what doesn't make a good microgreen. Now this definitely should have been the first video that I filmed in this episode because the first episode was the setup. And that was a slight mistake on my part because I got the setup done, but I kind of got the cart before the horse here because if you don't know what a microgreen is, you don't really know if you wanna get into microgreens in the first place. So that was a big mistake on my part and I do apologize. But with that being out of, you know, with that being said, um, you know, a lot of you still did really enjoy that episode and I thank you guys so much for your support. But I did wanna answer this question or I guess these three questions because I think they are vital to influencing you to either want to do microgreens or not, and also picking the right crops to to you know to actually grow for microgreens. Because without this information, there's a whole lot of gray areas and a whole lot of question marks. So let's get into those three questions because those were definitely the top three questions that were brought up on that video. A lot of you have really come to expect really deep dive information on this channel. Um, and I really do try to promote, you know, in-depth information, really trying to keep it uh, from being two-dimensional. I think there's so much recycled information on the internet that it becomes kind of just regurgitation. This episode, unfortunately, will be a little bit more regurgitation than a in-depth video, but hopefully you'll still find value in it because there's so many of you that I'm gathering from the comment section that, you know, don't even know what a microgreen is that for me, if I went in depth, I fear that I would uh, run the risk of uh, overwhelming and confusing a lot of these people more, maybe even you, than you already were in the first place. So I don't wanna do that, which is why I wanna start with very basic, pretty much universal information about microgreens. And then once you have a foundation, we can dig a little bit deeper and kind of grow a little bit more as microgreen gardeners, no pun intended. So um, with that being said, I want to first address the elephant in the room, which is what is a microgreen? Because in order, in order to answer those other two questions about what makes a good microgreen and what makes a bad microgreen, you first have to know what a microgreen is. So let's first talk about that. The definition of a microgreen that I think best fits my idea of what a microgreen is, is any vegetative crop that is harvested for consumption slightly after the sprout phase and allowed no more than two or three adult leaves. This is basically the window of what a microgreen stage is. You see, you have uh, what's called the sprout phase. Sprouts are, you can find them in stores. Sprouts are grown in a water solution. Water is a good growing medium for sprouts because you don't need them to take hold. You don't need them to form tap roots or uh, any form of root structure at all. You just want them to form a single uh, tap root, push out of the seed coating, and you really harvest them for the sprout itself. Sprouts are uh, the, the very first stage of growth, and then you enter the seedling stage. Seedlings pretty much are an all-encompassing term for anything after it sprouts to all the way to just before full maturity which is why there's a lot of confusion about what is a microgreen. And that's why the definition of a microgreen is a crop that is cultivated and harvested for consumption only after uh, or only before two or three sets of adult leaves. So that means anything after two or three sets of adult leaves would not be considered a microgreen. And you might be asking why? Why is there such a specific definition? And that's because microgreens are grown for their nutritional value of baby form. These are baby crops, not fully mature crops, and they're not almost fully mature seedlings. They're very young infant plants. And so with that definition being in mind, that can better help define what doesn't make a good microgreen. One of the biggest components of the definition is a vegetative crop harvested for consumption. This means that it is a, a pretty much a foliage crop. So to answer the first question, which is what does, or I guess to answer the second question, what doesn't make a good microgreen? Anything that you don't eat for its foliage. Tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, you don't eat those for their foliage, or at least 
I don't, and I certainly hope you don't. Those are crops that you harvest for their fruit. So those don't make good microgreen crops. Another type of seed that does not make a good microgreen are crops that take a long time to germinate. These are a lot of your herbs, and there are some vegetables as well that just don't, they don't germinate very fast. And if they don't germinate very fast, you run the risk of mold and mildews being formed. Because you're using a soil growing medium, molds and mildews are inherent. They're in every air. That's why mold will form on bread, even if it's in a sealed bag. It's just, it's everywhere. And when that lands onto a damp growing medium, regardless if it's sterile or not, the mold will take hold and form on organic matter. Anytime that mold or mildew can breed, you run the risk of damping off, which will kill your seedlings, or you run the risk of harmful bacteria and, and, um, and uh, molds being grown on your crops, then you're harvesting for consumption. And that is why you often have a lot of recalls on things like sprouts and microgreens because uh, that mold and mildew can actually be harmful. And that's why sprouts and microgreens do get a bad rep. But if they're done correctly and you pick the right type of crops, and you keep them in a soilless growing medium that uh, you know they sprout really quickly, you shouldn't have too much of an issue with, uh, with any molds or mildews. So I do wanna make a very small exception into the rule of what does not make a good microgreen because you might be thinking only things that you eat their leaves are things you should be growing for their microgreens, but there are really good microgreens that you don't harvest for their leaves. Things like sunflowers. Sunflowers, you harvest for their seeds and the mature flowers themselves. I don't know anybody that's eating the leaves of sunflowers, but their young, their, you know, the young form plant does in fact make a really good microgreen. So I wanted to make that delineation because it's, it, it is very important. There are certain exceptions. Another one would be peas. You know, you've harvested the fruit from the peas, but the pea shoots themselves are very tender and very delicious. So this would be another foliage crop that you could consume. So just note that, that there are a few crops in this category that don't quite fit into that rule. So now I wanna address the third question and final question about microgreens, which is what seeds make good microgreens? And again, those are any seeds that take about three to five days to sprout, so quick sprouting crops and crops that you would harvest for your leaves. These could be things like radishes or even things like broccoli and cauliflower. One crop that you can grow for microgreens that is really not commonly talked about is basil. Basil, again, you're eating its foliage because you're eating the basil leaves, but basil sprouts within three to five days as well. And the only caveat to that is that basil is very expensive. With it being so expensive, it's not a common microgreen that you'd grow around the house and it's typically reserved for you know, high dollar menus at pretty fancy restaurants. And there's nothing wrong with that, but just note that going in, that the, the seeds that make better microgreens are the seeds that are pretty inexpensive. You can also grow microgreens from cabbage. I love cabbage as well. Cabbage is a really inexpensive microgreen seed and also mustard. Mustard is a wonderful microgreen seed. And you might be asking yourself, Luke, where do you get all these microgreen seeds from? Well, you can get them from any seed supplier, but there's a but to that. You wanna make sure that they are, uh, that there's something that's going to be fresh seed. There's a lot of companies out there that sell microgreen seed. Um, MIGardener.com sells seeds that can be used for microgreens, but we don't sell bulk seed because we, we primarily focus on high quality seed that can be grown to full maturity. And so you can find microgreen seeds out there, but make sure that you go with a reputable source. One of the things that I will say is that we try to harvest our own seed. This is the f most free way and you know, it's, the, it's definitely the most inexpensive. You just have to wait a year to get your seed. So these were all seeds that we let go to seed, I guess. Uh, we let them grow to full maturity and then harvested the seed pods. So we harvested radish, we let them go, we just let about six or seven plants go to seed. And we got this many seeds from six or seven plants, which is a great return. This is our, uh, this is our broccoli, or no, sorry. This is our broccoli, yes, this is our broccoli. They all look the same when they're brassicas. Um, 
So our broccoli, we let our broccoli go to seed. This came from about 10 plants or so, and we lost a lot of seed because we waited a little too long. Um, with our mustard, our mustard, we just let our mustard go to seed and we harvested that, and that came from about five or six plants as well. So you can get a lot of seed from just a small amount of plants. So it's not like you have to dedicate a whole garden. In terms of our cabbage, our cabbage we actually had one of our plants go to seed last year, and this was saved from a pak choy plant, or not a, a pak choy, a um, napa, a napa cabbage, <laughs> sorry. This is from a napa cabbage that we had go to seed, and so we really grow our own seeds, and that way we have a lot to use, and it's free. So just keep that in mind, that free is always better, and seeds that you save yourself will definitely be fresher and have a higher germination rate, which is definitely important when you're sprouting microgreens, because the more efficiently you can get a, a tray to sprout means the more food you're going to grow in that square footage. Other seeds that are very easy to grow and harvest that I have notes for on my phone here are things like arugula. Like I said, basil. We actually harvested a bunch of basil seed that we'll be using for growing microgreens as well. Again, I would not recommend buying basil seed to grow for microgreens. I'd rather grow a few plants and let them go to seed at the end of the year, personally. But basil makes a good microgreen. There are cilantro. Cilantro is very easy to grow. Let a few plants go to seed. You'll have so much seed for microgreens. It's unbelievable. We had uh, seed from our cilantro that we let go to seed. Another thing is collards. Uh, like I said, radishes. Amaranth is a great microgreen. Amaranth, you let a few plants go to seed, you've got pounds of seed. Beets, Swiss chard. These are all things that you can grow. Kale. These are all brassicas and, and very common garden plants that you can grow and let them go to seed. So you don't have to buy a whole lot to get good seed to start your microgreens. I really would encourage you guys to just get adventurous, get excited about microgreens and see what's out there. There's also a big question around things like carrots. Carrots take a while to mature and they're also not really typically grown for their leaves. Regardless if their leaves are edible or not, they just don't make good microgreens. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments box below. And also, thank you so much for bearing with me. I've had a cold and I'm just getting over it. So as you can see, it's still bothering me um, <laughs> because I'm quite nasally and I've had a sore throat. So uh, every once in a while when I, when I swallow, it uh, really, really grips you. So <laughs> thank you guys so much. I love you guys as always. And this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all on the next episode very, very soon. See you guys.